All right, everyone, I'm happy to give you uh, a great presentation on our Patreon-only content with respect to this uh, plumbing uh, work that we did the takeoff on. We did the overview. And now we're going to take a look at the, um, the estimate and then take a look, too, at our cost book. And as a Patreon um, subscriber and also a subscriber on our website, uh, the Plumber's um, the Plumber's Corner, you will also receive one of the um, man hour calculators every month that you are subscribed. So sometimes in the next couple of days, we'll have a calculator up for some, maybe some of the, uh, the uh, I think one or two of the piping systems. So be looking for that. Okay, so when we finish this takeoff, remember it, it was a very small just a, a bathroom addition in an existing uh, location okay and so let me take my face off of here and some words off of here and we can get going all right so this was the takeoff where we had done the we looked at the uh, riser diagram and got all of the vertical measures okay so we what we did was what we do we count how many uh, locations up okay and then we say well I my rule of thumb is 10 feet so for every location I've counted that's why I dotted so it's like mm, this up that up one and a half inch up and this is vent so we have two one and a half inch vent up so I would give that 20 feet of vent up and if you look at the previous video, it shows the shortcomings and the shortfalls, the pitfalls in this set of plans. Okay, so those things you have to look out for. So make sure you watch the previous video. And this uh, exclusive video uh, explanation is only for our website subscribers uh, and our Patreon sub subscribers. So, all right, so we did all the measurements and everything from the other... Uh, from the other um, video you can watch and so when we use plan swift you know which we just use it as a ruler right so it gave us all our totals we did take offs for everything okay and here we we're around here and where we're at our four inch waist we had 12 feet of that <laughs> if you can see that in the blue okay so we got all of our takeoffs the the clean outs all that stuff okay and so what we did we want to look at the final estimate and this is how and two for subscribers we're going to give you this master format that we use now uh, what you'll have to do okay now we'll give you a master format but you'll also start to receive all of the man hour calculators which is basically just like this but you know we'll just tell you we'll give you all of the sizes possible sizes of vent whether it's PVC see it, it's and we'll see at the cost book depending on what you're installing right the construction industry gives you a different cost unit is what we call it and this over here let's make sure we we're uh, let's move this over a little bit to make sure oh, wrong one hold on real quick there we go let's make sure we can see everything okay there we go and so we have all of our different size pipes so you'll begin to receive the man hour calculators which is basically a excel spreadsheet with all of the different types of sizes of pipe and we go by construction industry standards so we you know the cost unit is what we're using here this number here and basically this is the number that the construction industry says it takes us to install one unit so in this case one linear foot a four inch uh, and this would be actually I need to change that because we I looked on in the specifications typically your uh, sewer pipe is PVC, but this happened to be, these are prices for cast iron. 
So I'm glad I didn't submit that yet. Okay, so uh, cast iron and copper for, see, and I have to do that, yes, cast iron and copper. All right, we're going to use copper for the water pipe. And, you know, if you, if you do this for a living, you know, but you know my videos are tailored for people that do it for a living, trying to get into it, or just have a clearer understanding, you know, so. Uh, um, all right, so some zeros, that just means we didn't have a three inch sanitary pipe uh, going on there. All right, so. All right, so this is how we break down our estimate, and uh, this is how we recommend that you do as well because there are different price schemes if you are installing the pipe in a horizontal position as opposed to the vertical position. And so in some cases, the cost of that labor is going to be different. Usually for the vertical position, the labor the cost unit is, is lower. Okay, but in a good cost book, as what we're going to see, you know, it gives us the difference for vertical and horizontal installation. And the cost includes all of the um, supports and all of that stuff. So when a cost book, in, in our cost book, the purpose of it is to give us quick price so we can quickly bid on stuff. Okay, and it's very accurate, very so. I mean, there I've the the jobs my clients have won the most have been the specialty trades because we go by the cost book we get a bare bones estimate they put a reasonable overhead and profit on it and it looks you know if they give them we don't recommend giving them our work product because the GC is just going to tear it apart but other than that it looks very good it's it's on point and uh, you as the plumber right it makes your job very easy because the way we format it we know exactly how many linear feet of each of the items because we've done a very detailed takeoff with a very accurate digitized software so it's, it's you know and then for the vertical positions like I was saying every time we look on the riser <coughs> diagram we just use 10 feet times each location and so that's how we came up with that so the horizontal runs of pipe the vertical runs okay and then now all of the equipment <clears throat> so you know the equipment we just write now i typically get it when i have to count pieces of equipment you know like for the clean outs and things like that and the valves and that's not going to be on your equipment schedule of course okay and so I feel the most accurate place to do those counts would be uh, from the uh, uh, from the risers, okay? Because let's go back, okay? Because if you go from the risers, all the equipment is right here. And typically, you'll know to count it one time. You know, so I don't really like going from the floor plan because it may not show <clears throat> all of the floor drains and wall cleanouts and stuff clearly on the floor plan. So I like counting my uh, equipment on. Uh, and see, I'm mixing up HVAC too because I just finished an HVAC. So yeah, I like counting all of my fixtures for my plumbing using the riser diagrams because it's clearly there. The whole system is there. You just have to make sure that like certain things that, for instance, if you have like a grease interceptor, that's not going to be shown on your water plan, you know, on your water riser is going only going to be shown because that's specific to a uh, a sewer plan, right? Is and things like maybe your uh water heater won't show on your sewer plan, but it only show on your water plan. It really depends sometimes. So that's why you really have to uh you know, pay close attention to 
plumbing fixtures that are specific to only that plan. Like a, 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 a real good example is the interceptor, grease interceptor. <clears throat> You'll see that on the waste and vent, but you probably, you know, that won't be reflected even though it exists on the water one. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so let's go back. So all of our cleanouts, all of our equipment from our counts, and, and again, and this is a small uh, addition, a small bathroom addition, so we didn't have much. Okay, and to what's really important, miscellaneous, and where uh, the plumber cheats himself a lot. Okay, so rule of thumb anytime you have a new piece of plumbing equipment installed for the very first time in whether even if it is in a uh, an addition <clears throat> an addition is just new construction connected to existing construction so that's pretty much the same as new construction if you want to think about it okay so you have to uh, always incorporate those roughing costs for each piece of equipment not so much for the floor drains and things of that nature, but definitely for all of the systems that require a hot water, uh, a sewer portion that connects to a sewer or a water portion in that way. You know, so all of your main fixtures that you would find on your fixture plan, whether they're showers, uh, laths, water closets, urinals, bathtubs, you know the interceptors all of that there is an additional cost that we refer to as the rough in for the plumber and if you had to have a term for the rough in i always say it's the additional plumbing cost to connect that piece of plumbing equipment to the building for the very first time right so the <clears throat> connections for the sewer system to that piece of equipment for the very first time not the finished trim, but the rough-in trim, right? And that's what those costs. So never forget your rough-ins because you got cast iron and all the angles and all the labor to install those things, right? It can be very, very expensive. So you never want to forget that. <clears throat> and in our format, we always include two extra things. And that uh, one would be to connect all of the new systems waste vent water to the existing so whatever you feel is appropriate and material and labor for that okay you do that and uh you know the pipe insulation like the last project uh, we did it was just the hot water pipe that had to be um, insulated so that's what we add and then no matter whether it's a new construction or a renovation we always include a cost to flush and test the system and then of course the permit cost now what we will not include on the plumbing plan even though the plumber may arrange it and that it's understood you know that they will handle it there, there should be a totally different estimate for any trenching and backfill and concrete work saw cutting all that type of stuff because you want to the professional and just like the GC has to have it they always want every trade every division broken down separately so the earthwork division is not the plumbing division right so it should be a totally separate estimate even though you may cover it as the plumber so keep that in mind it should be totally separate because technically there could be totally separate overhead and, and, and everything associated with that <coughs> scope of work as opposed to your plumbing scope of work so always if it's not in your division it should be in a separate estimate okay so let's look at the cost book we use craftsman cost book and this is where we we produce our man hour calculators that we give you okay and so basically this is uh you know let's let's just put something in here Let's put, uh, and this it happens to be my other screen, so. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to put in floor sinks. Okay, so clean outs, da da da, end of the line, in line, you know, so a good cost book's going to give you 
based on the zip code that we put in the system. It's going to give us local pricing in plus or minus about 5%. And so, you know, you go ahead and at 15%, you'll be covered. But the best thing, the benefit of having a cost book like this is you, you can determine your man hours based on construction industry standards, which is the gold mine of really knowing your trade and knowing what to do and know how to and, and knowing how to produce a construction schedule. Okay, so that's how we put together our Excel spreadsheet by our takeoff information. Cost book gives us the material cost. We don't have to call our supplier. That's just a waste of your production, right? If you're just trying to bid on projects to win, you know, you don't want to have to call your supplier every time. You want to have a very good, solid cost book because the cost book not only gives you that solid, instant, fingertip material cost, right? It also supplies you with the gold standard of knowing what you're doing and, be, and being able to produce a very detailed, tight estimate because the tighter it is, the more competitive you'll be and the, you're going to win. My plumbers, uh, I did an estimate for a state job for a plumber and it was like a million dollar estimate and he won. Just we used me one time, I think he paid me 300 bucks. You know, because I use the gold standard of estimating, okay, that I'm more than happy to share with my students, you know, but <clears throat> a lot of this stuff I, you don't, I don't give for free, right, because it took me a long 14 years to, to learn, so I don't, I'm, I'm a very appreciative when my patrons and my students, you know, think it's, <clears throat> valuable enough to to contribute every month so I do appreciate you valuing uh, my expertise and I'm glad to share all of it so okay so cost book information we're gonna get you some man hour calculators once a month and basically all you'll have to do and they'll be broken down by <clears throat> different types and sizes of the pipe, the PVC, the copper, because again, depending on what it is, cost book's gonna say it takes a certain different amount of time. Everything, all the types don't take the same amount of time to install. So that's the value of having that and being able to produce very good, uh, very good solid estimates where you can depend on the price and and you can be happy with it and know it's based on something, right? So, you know, I'm going to conclude that here. If you have any questions on this or anything else, make sure you email me at education at sfjohnsonconsulting.com. Again, thank you very much for contributing to my life. And uh, I'm just going to keep putting stuff up here till you get sick of me. Talk to you soon.